Document 050, The Great Researcher Prank War of blank. On January blank, 2000 blank, during an attempted capture of SCP-963 by Chaos Insurgency agents, Dr. Bright made use of 963's intrinsic capabilities to make fools of the attempted kidnappers. When Bright returned to his office, he found a monkey statue waiting for him. His office had been tidied in his absence, and everything filed away, which came as something of a shock for the naturally messy Dr. Bright. Upon further investigation, it was found that, despite the apparent tidiness of his office, all of his pins had been drained of all but the last bit of ink, and several important documents had been translated into Aramaic. Dr. Bright immediately began the usual testing of this new SCP, but found himself going nowhere until Dr. Wright's, as payback for something unspecified, smeared his desk with one half of a compound epoxy and applied the other half of the compound to his utensils. At this point, SCP-050 vanished from Dr. Bright's office, reappearing in Dr. Wright's office, whereupon 050 began the cleanup again. After several tests, it became apparent that SCP-050 was easily contained, as long as no one outside the Foundation proved to be cleverer than the Foundation scientists. Of course, this led to many of the Foundation scientists seeking to claim the title of most clever for themselves, and thus began the Great Researcher Prank War of blank. Memorandum 050-A. No good will come of this. 05-blank. Entry 1. Bright to English. Dr. English accesses SCP-705. 705 is allowed access to approximately 100 pounds of similarly colored Play-Doh. After several minutes' conversation, the new army retreats to the ventilation shafts. No footage of Dr. Bright's room exists, but several hours later Dr. Bright stumbles out, covered in little red welts and red Play-Doh, swearing and muttering. SCP-050 transfers ownership to Dr. English. Entry 2. English to Eisendorf. At 11.30 p.m. on blank, Agent Strelnikov is seen exiting his room in full rage, carrying a machine gun. Smoke pours from the open door of his quarters. Senior researcher Eisendorf is later found to be in possession of 050, proving that a good enough prank will attract 050's attention no matter the target. Entry 3. Eisendorf to Kondraki. At 10.25 a.m., blank, Dr. Eisendorf returned from a brief coffee break to discover a typed note sitting on his desk, rewritten here. Dr. Eisendorf, it seems there was a problem with the Class A amnestic you requested following your SCP-231 assignment. Please hop on the next plane leaving from the site, and wait until someone comes and picks you up so that we can get this all sorted out. Cheers. 05-blank. Despite factual and stylistic errors in this note, in appropriately informal style, the fact that there is no Overseer 3.14, Dr. Eisendorf apparently took the note seriously and became highly distressed. Dr. Eisendorf boarded the next airplane leaving Site-23, which turned out to be a regularly scheduled flight traveling to Site-19. Dr. Eisendorf apparently did not realize this until landing, at which point he still waited over eight hours outside the site, before a guard found him and asked him what he was doing. Dr. Eisendorf soon confirmed that he had never been assigned to SCP-231, and quickly worked out what had happened. SCP-050 was observed in the office of Dr. Kodraki later that same day. Entry 4. Kondraki to Called. At 7.28 p.m., blank, 2009, Dr. Kondraki was called away by Assistant Researcher House under the pretense of a SCP-173 containment breach. Security cameras recovered footage of the ensuing prank. Upon returning to his office, Kondraki pauses briefly when he reaches his door. Moments later, he is seen backing slowly out of his office, keeping his eyes fixed on something inside. It was later revealed that Dr. Kald had placed a replica of SCP-173 in Kondraki's office, positioned in such a way that it faced the door, establishing eye contact with whoever might enter the room. Kondraki continued to retreat until slipping on a hitherto unnoticed puddle of cooking oil. The replica of SCP-173, made of wire frame, paper mache, and spray paint, was relocated to Dr. Yosef Kald's office, shortly followed by SCP-050. Entry 5. Called to Yorick. Upon returning to his office on blank, 2009, Dr. Cald was surprised to find the statue replaced with a note, reading, I can't believe no one's thought of this. The statue was later located in the staff locker of Agent Yorick, who had simply stolen it. Entry 6. Yorick to Cald. Statue returned to Cald. Yorick's living space in utter disarray. Agent Yorick is found unconscious, the words, to be earned, tattooed on his forehead through unknown means. Entry 7. Called to Light. From blank 2009 to blank 2009, maintenance teams were called 27 times to Dr. Cald's office while he was out. 
all having received orders to install, repair, or remove a piece of furniture from the office, apparently at random. Dr. Cald became increasingly paranoid about these intrusions, considering his possession of SCP-050, and at blank of blank 2009, decided to bring his paperwork and the SCP back to his quarters and work from there. Upon entering his quarters, Dr. Cald was doused by the contents of a bucket carefully balanced on the entrance's door jam. Ownership of SCP-050 changes to Dr. Light. Entry 8, Light to Coleman. On blank 2009, Dr. Coleman was seen pinning a notice to the break room notice board which read, Due to the effects of SCP-, blank, all personnel who have received an amnesiac of any kind within the past six months are required to report to Dr. Light immediately. This was signed and notarized by no fewer than 17 members of O5 Command and senior staff. After seeing this, an email was immediately sent out retracting the information and causing mass panic among some of our more paranoid employees. After what can only be described as a bum rush on Dr. Light's newly refurbished office resulting in the destruction of many items contained within, SCP-050 was found on Dr. Coleman's desk. Entry 9, Coleman to Okagawa. On blank 2009, Dr. Coleman was called out of his quarters by an email from an unknown source. Five minutes later, security footage showed Dr. Okagawa entering Schumacher's quarters, carrying a bag with unknown contents, and leaving the room a few minutes later without the bag. Upon returning, Coleman discovered a dead rodent which appeared to have been slathered in the secretions of SCP-447. Personnel in adjacent rooms reported hearing a stream of profanity, followed by a thud. Worried researchers found him passed out on the floor, while the slime was later identified as green gelatin from the kitchen, and the dead rat as a rubber toy. SCP-050 was later found in Dr. Okagawa's office. Entry 10, Okagawa to Chapelsky. Video Log, Blank, 2009, 12.34 p.m. Dr. Okagawa leaves for the cafeteria, presumably for lunch slash late breakfast. Researcher Chapelsky is seen entering Dr. Okagawa's office, carrying several testing vials and SCP-. blank Left the office five minutes later, closing the door behind him rather hurriedly. Okagawa returns ten minutes later, opens the door, and is snagged by a large tentacle which pulls him into the office and shuts the door behind him. A security team is dispatched to Okagawa's office, and discovers him entangled by a giant squid. The team is seen trying to neutralize the cephalopod and free Okagawa. The animal's remains were subsequently destroyed. SCP-050 has been located in researcher Chapelsky's office. Entry 11, Chapelsky to Jones to Chapelsky to Jones to Bright. Entry 11-1, on blank 2012, researcher Chapelsky came into work at approximately 0800 and promptly received a pie in the face, courtesy of Project Director Jones. SCP-050 was found on Project Director Jones's desk later that afternoon. What? That wasn't original at all! Dr. Bright. Entry 11-2. On blank 2012, Project Director Jones reported to his post researching SCP-. Blank. Upon entering the facility, he was met by researcher Chapelsky, who threw two pies at his face. SCP-050 was found in researcher Chapelsky's office ten minutes later. Entry 11-3. On blank 2012, Chapelsky entered his office to find Project Director Jones waiting for him with three pies, which he promptly threw at the researcher's face. SCP-050 appeared in Jones's workplace that evening. Guys, I think we broke it. Project Director Jones. Entry 11-4. In the middle of the workday, Dr. Bright entered Jones's research lab with four pies, which he threw in his face. As he was leaving, security footage records him saying, This better not fucking work. SCP-050 was on Dr. Bright's desk upon his return. Notes. God damn it, Dr. Bright. Okay, no more fucking pies, all right? Project Director Jones. Entry at hash, Bright to SCP-732. On blank, 2012, an error occurred in the Foundation main database, reassigning System Technician Kent to a squad di- Stop in the dread Lord Asatov inside the cleaning crews. During the sedging of Castle Hellfire meant Joshua Kent was ordered to save the Princess Ashley from the Baron Blackstaff, all sewage with several gallons of feces, gold and platinum, on his head. During the second half of the assignment, Sir Kent and his friends, the Magical Knight Bob, had to test several super magic weapons, despite the odor. During this time, a routine system sweep found a barrel of pure awesomeness in the database. Despite the numerous nearby systems that could have been infected, SCP-1337 fought the Dreadlord on a volcano concerning System Technician Kent's assignment. System Technician Kent was returned to Site-23 largely unharmed. 
SCP-050 was discovered sitting by a hard drive heavily infected with SCP-732, with the statue seeming to consider the virus its new owner. Entry 13, data expunged. Entry 14, data expunged. Entry 15, SCP-732 to light. On blank 2012, Dr. Light connected the SCP-732 infected hard drive to a scanner and asked 732 if it could produce lolcat images on request. Its response, presented in the form of an 8,000-word erotic story featuring itself, in the form of a man named Lord Kickass, Dr. Light and Redacted, was that with the help of SCP-050 it can do anything. Dr. Light provided SCP-732 with scanned photographs of SCP-577, SCP-529, SCP-607, and two instantiations of SCP-331. SCP-732 produced ten low-cat images for each photograph. Dr. Light then provided SCP-732 with SCP-637 in the form of a drawing by SCP-637-2. As a result of this, SCP-732 was rapidly overwritten with an estimated 63 gigabytes of text describing SCP-673's actions and appearance. Whether this information could have filled all available computer memory is unknown, as the last actions of the Lord Kickass instantiation were to induce total mechanical failure to its hard drive, accompanied by catastrophic uncontrolled oxidation. SCP-050 was found in Dr. Light's office the next morning. Note. SCP-637-2 reports that SCP-637 was not harmed by its venture into SCP-732, but that its fur was really messed up. Note, other copies of SCP-732 seem unaffected by the suicide of Lord Kickass.